In the weeks surrounding the D-Day invasion of 1944, Allied airmen who had been shot down over northern France struggled to survive and return to their bases, using escape lines set up by the French resistance. But for a group of nearly 170 of these airmen, this would become a terrifying journey to hell and back. My grandfather, Easy Freeman, was one of them. For decades, he and the others only told this story to their closest friends and family. They witnessed the worst horrors of the Nazi regime from inside one of the most infamous concentration camps in history. And this incredible tale of survival started the moment their feet touched enemy soil. When I finally decided to pull a ripcord, I could see the leaves on the tree almost, and I could see a couple of people out there in the field. My plane crashed right up against that building over there. I landed in a grain field right up here. I heard them coming, and they were shooting through the trees. The only thing I did was dive under a bush and pull the bush down over me. About 25 to 30 farmers were working in this grain field on my left. They come up to me, and they assigned two young men to hide me. You had to trust whoever held a hand out to you. The man in the passenger seat turned around with the pistol in his hand. Once you fall into the hands of the Gestapo or the SS, it's game over. They just play by their own rules. Flieger means flyer, and terrorist means you're a terrorist dropped in like a spy or something like that. So as we entered this place that they were screaming and pointing to, we could see like barbed wire, we could see a guard tower, but the thing that frightened us the most was this tall chimney with smoke belching out of it. Where are we? Never having any knowledge of concentration camp. We walked right by the crematory, and a German guard said, uh, the only way you leave this place is smoke coming out of that building. The only way you got out of book wall was through the chimney. The longer we stayed there, that's just what we figured. We decided to get kind of organized because we were in the military and we would decide on who was the senior officer and who would be in command and we would follow orders and we would act like a military unit. My old friend there, he comes on me and said, are you going to work or not? And yeah, we got there and there was a machine gun set up. The orders were given that not to leave Book Hall, not to go to any other camp. That seemed to be a pretty strong conviction that we were sent to Book Hall to be executed, we were sent to Book Wall, never to be released. We realized, how the heck are we ever gonna get out of here? We never will. 